boys out there, and welcome to the Lonely Boy Hour, uh, the podcast for when you're feeling sad and lonely, or just sad or lonely, or neither. Uh, I am I am your host, uh, Kelvin, a.k.a. the Noodle Doodler. I'm joined with, as always, everyone's favorite pile of trash. Hi, it's me, Trash Z, or Zoe. And today, we have Joe. Joe, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Joe, a.k.a. Mr. Pillsuit on TikTok and every other piece of social media that I've ever failed on. Oh, <laughs> damn, <laughs> confidence right there. Uh, so how, how, how's your morning been going? Oh, uh, it, it's, it, I got coffee starting to surge through me. The caffeine is starting to pump through my system. So we'll see, we'll see where the uh, difference in attitude starts. Once, oh, we uh, have this big time zone difference because you said Friday morning, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to wake up. And then you said nine o'clock Pacific, which is eleven for me and noon for Zoe. So we got we got a rest for it. Yeah, you guys, you guys have, uh, you guys have been up for a hell of a lot longer than I have. I literally, mm. I got your message uh, about it. it's like, hey, by the way, we're ready to go, and that was two hours ago at eight o'clock. So it was at six o'clock that you messaged me, and I went to bed at four. Oh, so you are. So. Damn, you're dedicated. You could have just been like, hey, I'm too tired and can't do it today. We wouldn't have been mad. Nope. <laughs> Screw it. By the way, is there a person on this? I should probably oh, preface Oh, fuck it. yeah, there okay, is. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, yes, and fucking uh, my life is crazy right now, man. Also, oh, it's, yeah, I'm a... it's bold to assume that we've been up for a while because I definitely have not been up that long. My I usual have, but... mornings before all of this used to be uh, I would wake up like 11 to noon um, and just be a night owl all night. But considering new things have started to change, like I, I, I'm finding myself more of an early bird than a night owl, which is such a difference. I, I made that change all at once. I was working overnight and now I don't. So now I I am very early bird. I wake up at like seven or eight every morning. Yeah. Uh, I feel refreshed. I've slept a decent amount of time. Like it feels good, but I'm not used to it. I mean, I was a I was I will say I was upset when I saw that you were leaving the convenience store, but obviously it was to make you know it was for good reasons, obviously, I'm sure. Yeah. Right? Please yeah. Say well yes. it was uh, I'm gonna say yes. Okay. Um, I was I was also worried about the leaving the gas station because I was afraid that that was my entire fan base was just me being upset at a gas station <laughs> instead of me being upset at my house. And sure enough, since then I've lost a little bit of engagement, but I I couldn't keep working there anymore. First of all, like I, I left for a higher paying job, but I no longer have that job, so let's not focus on that. Oh, great, but, uh, got it. But also, one of the big things that made me leave uh, was not like the people I worked with, the people I worked with were great. It was uh, the people who would come in because it's just like I never showed it, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was just like I would like I'd have all these like grumpy drunk assholes from the bar across the street come in all night. I'd get yelled at because I can't legally sell drunk people beer, and I would just, people would yell at me because we didn't sell bread. Like I had a say in that. I was just kind of <laughs> done with it. Yeah, I know that feeling. I used to be a Lyft and Uber driver, so oh, I yes, uh, yeah. I mean, I had a guy try to take a bite out of me, which was uh, that was fun. Oh like, shit! Like zombie mode bite? No, I call him the zombie lift. Yes, uh, because. Oh, God. I got him home, and he was passed out the entire time there. So thank goodness I at least got the destination out of him once he got into the car. But Good. as soon as we got to his destination, I had to wake him up. So I had to, like, nudge him. And as he started to wake up, he just made this forward lunge while chomping at me. Like he oh, was going to bite me. And no. honestly, like... All of my instincts from video games, zombie apocalypse, <laughs> like themed games, came soaring back at me, and I straight up just pushed this dude back, and he just oh, kind of went. He, he just kind of looked at me and went, "I don't fucking care," and he like flopped out of the car, <laughs> and then he walked away, and it was the weirdest experience that I ever had until the next day when I realized that he left his wallet in my back seat. Oh, no. Oh. So on top of that, I had to call this guy through the Lyft app and be like, hey, I also have your wallet. Do you want that back? And he was like, yeah, I would totally love that back. Could you uh, come over there? And that's already like a 45-minute drive I'm not going to get paid for. So, uh, But being a courteous person, I 
went over there and did that. He comes out and he's a totally different person. The nicest, sweetest guy I've ever met. And he's just like, yeah, thank you so much. Oh, my God, here's a couple of bucks for gas. I know that it was probably a big trip and everything. And then he paused. And then he went, I didn't do anything weird last night, did I? (laughs) Oh, no. And I just remember having this moment of, like, should I tell him? And I was like, yeah, you kind of tried to take a bite out of me. And he looked at me he goes, fucking not again. And I was like, what do you mean not again? You can't not. uh, What? And he goes, uh, he goes, I'm sorry. I don't know what, what it is, but I'm actually a vegan. And I was like, you oh got my some, God. you've got some serious demons that you got to work with, dude, because I cannot Boy. like comprehend where this story has gotten to this place where you get drunk at a bar, go home in somebody else's car and then try to eat them. But it's okay. It Cause you're okay. a vegan. Oh my goodness. It doesn't make If that's make the okay. case, you shouldn't be vegan. <laughs> I think it's like that suppressive, like, I, t- to each their own. I'm not saying, like, you know, as much people say it's like, fuck vegans. Like, I, I don't care what somebody's food preference is, if it's for moral or, like, health reasons. But if your body's sane while you're unconscious, hey, I need red meat. I'm going to get it wherever <laughs> I need to get it. And you're trying to bite people? Yeah. I think just eat a fucking burger at some point, dude. Like, I mean, just There's cross point that where your threshold like, you every now and right again. Now. Right? I, I feel like that's that biological thing where it's like, we, we're, as much as there's the debate on it, I think we're supposed to eat meat. So, like, yeah. if, if this guy is like, speaking, yes. yeah. So, like, if this guy is going after me while he's like in this drunken stupor. Fucking eat a, like, yeah, just take a steak. I mean, just <laughs> eat an egg, if anything. Just do whatever you need yeah, to yeah, yeah. to get the protein into you, dude. Like, man, I don't and know how long he was a vegan, but whatever. I want to take a, a step back because you said, um, you know, I'm not one of those people who think vegan are assholes. Am I the only one who, like, has this weird thing where I get really angry, but then I don't stay angry? Because, like, let's see if Please. I can explain this in words that make sense. Um like loud minorities uh, really upset me because I talk about them. Like, uh, what I mean is like a group of people who are not like what like most, most vegans aren't assholes. But you don't like, yeah, you don't remember the person who goes, "Oh yeah, I'm a vegan," and then never brings it up again. You remember the person who goes, "Oh yeah, I'm a vegan," and you should be too because killing animals is wrong. Do you know what they do with the chicken? So like, you just remember them more, so you associate vegans with these assholes, or you know, feminists with you know, the people who think that men are evil, or so on and so forth. It's always the loudest uh, extremists of every single group that everybody stigmatizes the general uh, grouping of people. Like, that's just, uh, like, looking at things, that's exactly what always happens. It's like whoever's the loudest one in the room is the one that's going to get the attention. And then when they say that they're a part of another group, everyone looks towards them. It's like, fucking handle handle this guy. Right. This is, this is yeah, your you problem. You fix him. Stop it. Yeah. Um, so they get, yeah, so they get to be their crazy, and then the group has to apologize for said crazy. So we're we're, uh, we're recording this during Pride Month, so it, it won't mm-hmm. come out until after Pride Month. Month, but like an example is I made a video and it was like, "Hey, just because it's Pride Month doesn't mean you get to act like you're better than straight people." Yes. And like that, I am targeting the loud minority. And the first person was like, "Not everyone does that." I was like, "Yeah, I know. I'm specifically targeting the like minority that does." But then like I just got like a hundred comments of, "Hey, you know, not every gay person is like that, right?" Again, it's, uh, as I said, it's the person that's the loudest is the one that we're yeah. talking about. It doesn't mean that we're trying to chastise the entire group for it. It's just, yeah. again, though, it's like you've seen what happens when a bunch of white people right. start saying that they're better than everybody else. That shit starts getting real racist real quick. That's that's just like all of history, yeah. Exactly. And just because it's like it's a part of the minority doesn't mean that all of a sudden they have free reign to do it. Yes, I understand. Be prideful of anything that you do. If you're Irish, be Irish on uh, St. Patrick's Day. If uh, uh, Whatever other holidays that I, I pretend to know about. Um, <laughs> Good job. Like, you, you are allowed to be you on 
a specific time of the year, and that's fine. But if you're using it as the platform to demonize all other groups as well, then that's an issue. I, I just, I'm very inclusive with I think, everything. I think that the media I try doesn't do. help either, like especially like the yeah. news and stuff, because they always latch on to the loudest, the most obnoxious, the thing that'll get views, and then that's what people see that aren't there, and then that make just it expands upon this idea of like people. It's the bad eggs that look that show up on media, so it's the bad eggs that people associate with that identity, and it's super unfortunate. It. It's there's a term for that. The term for that is called the availability heuristic, where your views are changed by what you can actually see. Because like no one's yeah. ever like on the news like, hey, this terrorist <laughs> didn't blow anything up. So the only time you hear about like uh, you, the only time you hear about like say Muslims right. in America is when they blow something up. So, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And you know, it, I was actually just talking about this uh, with uh, Connor. TikTok um, news guy for anyone who doesn't know his, uh, his actual because, name. Yeah. Listen. He was yeah. on the podcast. <laughs> he better know at this point. Yeah. So, I mean, we we talked about that. Like, and I was like, yeah, I'm going on that too. He's like, oh, cool. Awesome. Um, And so, but we got onto the topic about like, you know, you know, this is kind of a shtick. This is his, uh, his way of, you know, making content for TikTok and. He uh, he was like, yeah, I mean, I just don't see how I could get out of that. It's like, honestly, dude, you're probably not going to because of the fact that the any kind of media, it's not it, like you said, it's like nobody cares about the things that are going. It's like uh, today, uh, nothing happened. You know, everything was great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, great. <laughs> they, they, the, it's the uh, proverbial. Everybody wants to see the the NASCAR uh, driver. Right run into the middle divider every like that's what you're looking for you're looking for the carnage you're looking for the uh the desperation and like you want to have some kind of empathy with it there's psychopaths out there that look at that and they're like oh, this is this is my cup of tea every single morning but for oh, yes. everybody else it's the, because they want to feel right. empathy for something else that's not them so uh yeah i mean it, it is a matter of it's like that's why when these stories come up, they're they're kind of crazy. Oh yeah, and and Connor, uh, when, if you're listening to this, you are truly stuck in TikTok news. Uh, one lesson <laughs> I've learned is once you get something popular on TikTok, you can't get like uh, Mr. Pillow. So you are you are famous for bearded baby, oh, and that yes makes I, I want to say that makes up like a third. Love I want to say baby, or less of your content. It's probably yeah. I want to say it's about you know a third to maybe even like half of the content at this point, which. It's going to be there for a while. Like, that's uh, – I'm not going to shoot myself in the foot and not do that um, because I love it too. I really do. But I <laughs> I keep getting comments uh, that are making me second guess uh, doing the uh, doing the entire thing because I, I can't – this isn't a magic show, guys. Like, I'm not trying to trick you into thinking I have, like, some kind of disability. But that's what, what some people what? think. Right. They actually think that that's my real body. And it, what? Yeah, so there's people that think that it's my real body and then there's other people that uh they think that I'm doing some kind of magic trick. So I get one of two comments. I get the is that your real body? And it's like if that's your real body, I feel bad for you. Or I get the uh little children that do the um they they try to overstep their maturity. So they try to act mature by using comments like, I know how you did this. Yeah, you and, put your face. And it's the... like, oh my God. are you kidding me? It's not, a, it's not a magic show. Like, I know that you can see how I'm doing this. But then there's, like, right. kids that'll try to break it down. It's like, clearly there's some kind of pillow formation under him or behind his back. And then he's sitting on a table with this body in front of him. You can see his knuckles through the costume. It's like, shut the fuck up. Like, yes. it's not yeah, right. like it's not it's, it's, seamless. the whole joke is it's a baby with a beard. It's a costume, guys. It, and honestly, this was all just concept. Like I started doing Bearded Baby because I wanted to make a character like that because I personally enjoyed and I hate people who bring up iCarly because I've never seen that fucking show. But that's the one that everyone registers because <laughs> that's when the digital era of like holding on to uh media started but my stuff is like jim varney Ernest. Um, oh yeah uh all that wienerville foo fighters okay. uh learn to fly music video like these are 
the inspirations for that. And I thought that there was a resurgence for this kind of comedy. I haven't seen anybody do that for a while. Obviously, iCarly got, did it for an episode, I believe. And everyone know, sticks with it. that. No, and I only know it because everyone blasts it into my comments every now and again. And especially after the Lord and Godwin thing. Um, I've never oh seen yeah, it I wanted to know more about that because all I saw about that was like the TikTok news of it. Yeah, and I want to know the full story. So, uh, uh, give uh, us that inside scoop, please. So, yeah. it, it was more of a matter of, and I take no credit for uh, inventing the baby body comedy schnick, but. When it comes down to TikTok, I was the one that kind of frontiered that as well as uh, established it as a part of my main content. Um, and yeah. when it comes down to other people doing the baby body, I've never had any issue with it. Uh, it's more of a matter of if they're going to do it, do it yourself in a unique way. I've seen right. a bunch of people do their baby bodies now, and I'm like, cool, you guys did something different than what I did. But when it's a straight play-by-play -play plagiarism of a video of mine like she did, that there's a difference in that. It's one thing to take somebody's uh, – it, it's one thing to have common ground as far as, let's say, like an essay paper in high school – and everyone's kind of got to do the same. It's like, okay, what are your thoughts on uh, 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 Catcher in the Rye? Like, and everyone says kind of the same thing. But it's another thing to straight up, like, verbatim do somebody else's paper. You know? Like, oh, yeah. there, there's, a, there's a bit of a change in that where it's like, it's one thing to be like, uh, you know, so-and-so did this and that and the other. And then the other person would be, so-and-so did this, that, and the other. Like, yeah, the difference between say, plagiarism and reference. Exactly. There's there's reference, and, inspiration, and plagiarism, and she was at the bottom rung when it came down to that. But I will give her credit. It seems like she's starting to give credit to everybody else that she steals from. Uh, oh, good. But she still had like she doubled down on me, and unfortunately that uh that did not help her case out any. Oh Jesus! Like, like just the fact that she wrong. did that. TikTok is largely stealing other people's content. Like, like oh, lip syncing absolutely. is the core mechanic of the app. Oh, yeah. Uh, but even, like, if I'm doing a rant that is based off of something someone else said, I still be like, hey, by the way, this is based off Aaron Samjo, for example, who I often steal rants from uh, or base <laughs> my rants off of. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of like uh, the one that I just did with uh, – uh, God, I can't remember his actual TikTok name, and that's really bad, seeing as I used a piece of his audio. But uh, the Nathan guy, the guy who did the look at the boards and uh, the eye one. Oh, um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so uh, he – like everyone uses his audio like because he's such a great guy. But to do like – if I was to do a – a video not as bearded baby but like use the same cuts in transitions use the same angles use the same like lighting and do exactly what he did that would be that would be different right. or that that wouldn't be different that would be me straight up copying him me taking like the bearded baby outfit putting some bug eyes in my eyes and making <laughs> myself look as cartoonish and expressive as possible i'm i'm making a rendition of that like i'm not I'm taking the audio and I'm doing something different. Theirs, you could say, is different because it was shit. But uh, <laughs> overall, they did take the uh, entire video and try to uh, transition it to their channel. But I am glad. It looks like I am finally in the top, uh, top one spot for that audio collection. I finally passed them in likes. I'm, I'm just done with that entire scenario. Step two, take over the world. Yeah. Yes. Um, I was just glad people recognized it. And thank, thankfully to people like uh, you uh, and uh, everybody else that did see that Connor news as well as the audio collection was like, this. these two just straight up stole your content. Like, they, yeah. they were such a vocal crowd of people that I think that's one of the reasons why people realize that that uh, that video was the original one and theirs was the copy oh and it's it's and it, like people i have to give credit the fans on tiktok are so like supportive almost too supportive at some yeah. point because like yeah. i for example uh i i think 
I think my most popular like tag I've ever created was uh, DM tips, right? Just give D and D advice for DMs. Uh, and I've made it very clear that I didn't want it to, I, like, if other people wanted to do it, they can, and now it's become this whole, like, community. But I still get, like, mentions every day that are like, hey, did you know these people are stealing your content? And I'm like, no, it's fine. Like, <laughs> see, I know this person. We've played D&D before together. I know them. And people are just like, ah, you're stealing the Noodle Doodler's content. And I'm like, I don't even do those really anymore. Uh, but it, it has its moments, like when someone literally steals your exact video frame by frame, it uh, is, using the same exact audio. Yeah, it is crazy when uh, when people like they they overstep that uh, line of like white knighting. I guess is the best way to put it. Um, oh yes, where they they see something, and it's one thing to give acknowledgement to the person where they think this is happening. I understand that because if it isn't something that was approved, then yeah, that can be uh, that can be very damning to like your content, especially if it is a possible like higher up their creator. Um, it it's it's very difficult to. It's like I made something that was unique to me, and then this person just straight up stole it. Um, but I think it's one of those like bringing the acknowledgement to the original creator just to find out. And then there's the ones that overstep their bounds and like they straight start like harassing the person first. And it's one of those shoot first, ask questions later situations that I feel that should be addressed as far as followers go is bring it up to the original creator. If they address the situation on TikTok or on their other social media, uh, d- then, you know, let it go um, because they now have the acknowledgement. If they want to rally their troops and, uh, you know, make that siege on them, like, I didn't I didn't make any videos as far as uh, Lauren Godwin on my, on my TikTok. I, di- I, I did a, like, a bit of a spill the tea live stream just to get a rant out and then i did make two uh instagram posts but i wasn't going to put it on the main platform where everyone could see what this was all about that kind of came up organically with everybody else who saw the uh two videos oh yeah and like it's it's weird how like i'm very anti-drama which i know if i want to get technical drama would make my channel grow right uh, but I'd rather not be a part of that because that's still stressful. Because first of all, I don't want to fake drama because I'm above that. <laughs> but I don't, I don't want like I'm trying to think of any drama I could have. Uh, so there was this one time where my favorite TikToker that I had at that time had blocked me because of some drama that happened. And I think I've told parts of the story before, but I was like, I could either bring this up and start this whole big argument that upsets a lot of TikTokers, but I don't care enough to do that Mm -hmm. and that that is something that once you start getting higher up there that there's there's these uh infightings as well as like these hidden arguments behind the scenes that a lot of people don't know about and you you like you're not wanting to like stoke the flames on those uh a lot of the times but i'm like you i don't like uh drama and this whole thing with her I'm want I want to sweep under the rug, uh, and for the most part, I like my whole ideology is like don't punch up, don't punch down, like self deprecate humor, um, because or self deprecating humor, like uh, like make fun of my own fat ass, not somebody else's, like. You, you like that that to me is the best way that I've grown because I'm not making fun of other people. I don't want to have that be where my comedy comes from. Um, I understand that that's where a lot of comedy uh, gets made because of the fact that it it's how you start the drama that makes it funny. But oh yeah, uh, I I personally try to keep myself very very like neutral as far as like i i just don't want to have to deal with people if i get comments on my uh on my videos that are trying to stir that stuff up i just immediately delete and block the person i don't even i don't even comment to them like i'm not going to give them any kind of 
artillery to shoot back at me. See, I try to stay out of the drama because my mentality is is that when there's an issue that really needs to be addressed and I'm really passionate about, I can come forward and be like, I don't have a lot of views on the politics on TikTok and the drama on TikTok, but this is important. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like my voice will be stronger for my followers to help rally my people to what I what I believe in. So I'm staying back from drama as much as possible until I know I'm absolutely certain I want to like put my foot down on something, you know? Exactly. It's a give give them enough rope to hang themselves with scenario. You don't want to right, be the right. one to jump the gun on that. Um, I think I could probably like I could probably start drama if it was like clearly something I was joking about, but I also don't trust my fans to know that. Um, I feel like a lot of things get lost in translation the second you start going down that path and nobody knows whether or not it's real or fake and you start to send people into attack. It, it can get very dicey and, you know, it's a risk that you make. I mean, you look at uh, Connor's channel and a lot of his stuff is justified when I look at the videos. It's like, yes, I understand that. But there's some that it's like he's making fun of just the silliness of some people's videos, not so much like attacking them because of their, uh, you know, their moral code is in question. But there is that weird, like, when you look at Connor's stuff, uh, you you have that like there is real news there, and then there's just goofy spotlight news, and it's yeah, hard and to I differentiate think, the two. Yeah, and I think like that's a big thing. Like I think honestly, I don't think Connor's like ever been like too. I don't know. I I say this as if we've talked every day or something, but I don't think he's like too like passionate. Like this is a bad thing, and we need to do something. I think he's definitely like just putting entertainment first. Right. But it's hard to really like if you don't realize that. It's, it's hard to take some of this shit, like, in a good way. And absolutely, but it, like, when he, uh, I mean, he has situations where he's gone after the right people for the right reasons, such as there was a video of this uh, one TikToker, and I don't know who it was, and I don't know, and I don't care to know him, um, but apparently they were making fun of a kid. Uh, they, they were doing something with a child, and they were bullying them. And th- this was like an adult, like this was an adult ch- bullying a child in a duet, and he called him out on it. And then TikTok removed that video that he called <laughs> him out on it, but left the bullying video. Oh, so TikTok it, does weird shit sometimes. I've seen that happen a lot, where the person calling out the bully gets their video removed and not the yeah. bully's video. It's super obnoxious and it's frustrating, at least for someone on my end, because I'm like, you're punishing somebody who's trying to protect the victim, but you're not punishing the person who's hurting the victim. Absolutely. I think that's something that I I personally wish that when it comes down to their automated reporting system, which has been weaponized by every single troll oh, on God, TikTok. It's so bad. Uh, oh yes. They they need to they need to find a better structure for that. And I really hope that in upcoming updates they start to address that more instead of I think it's great that we're able to do 60 second duets now. I think it's great that we're able to oh, do Oh, we can text. do 60 second duets now? If you're on yeah, Android, that's you now can a new do thing. 60 second duets and Same reactions. thing with, uh, yeah, iOS as well now. Like, oh, uh, is it it's on iOS? iOS. Yes. Cool. Um, so with those things, yeah, it's it's great that, you know, they're working on these features to keep, uh, it, obviously it's, you know, publish or perish. You know, they have right. to create more features to keep themselves up to date, but- at the same time, it's a matter of it's like on the back end of things, they need to work on their structure as far as it uh, is for actual content that's harmful to the to the app altogether. And I understand we're in this weird, I guess we're in the fourth or fifth wave of TikTok right now where um, the, the trolls have been here for a while and they've made their ironic and cringy like reaction videos to other people's content. They're starting to now die out a little bit, uh, or they've oh, yeah. gotten so popular doing the cringy stuff that they've stopped doing uh, stopped doing those uh, troll videos because they've gotten a following and now they're trying to hold on to it. So they're trying to establish themselves as actual like comedians and everything. So I, I I think it's really funny. I, I I'm not gonna name names, but. There are a few people where it's like their entire library of content up until they made like 100,000 followers was all just making fun of other people on the app. And then they turned around and they started being like, hey, guys, by the way, bullying's a bad idea. Don't do that to people. And it's like that is (laughs) real ironic and a bit hypocritical from you. 
that your entire library is you looking at other people and going, this this guy. And uh, now it's like their content is trying to be more established as like, you know, hey, let's do unboxing videos and stuff like that. Oh, good old unboxing videos. <laughs> All those unboxing what people come videos. to TikTok for. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. It's just funny to see where... They got on here to make fun of other people, and then they started getting the popularity, and now they've got to try to keep that following going. And the well's running dry as far as, like, yeah, okay, we've seen you do a bunch of videos making fun of people, and that's going to continue to happen. But how but are you going to keep yourself established once TikTok dies? Right. Like, where's yeah. the actual content that will follow you to other platforms for? Yeah. No, I have this. I ran my career in reverse then because, like, I started just because it looked like fun, and now my most popular shit is me complaining. <laughs> so, you mean you yelling at the camera? Yeah, me yelling directly at a camera, which does. I guess I could translate that into like YouTube rants if I wanted to, but I don't. I don't. That sounds. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I want to be known as a guy who complains everywhere. TikTok is fine. Mr. Pelosi, do you have a YouTube? I have not gone and stalked your your older other social media sites, so I'm curious. Do you have one? Yeah, I do. I actually got a bunch, like what I said before with uh, all the other apps that I failed on. It's, it's crazy because, I mean, I've been in the entertainment industry as a whole uh, for about 15 years. Um, really? Oh, wow. But, but I've... And I've almost been, it's almost a decade. It was 2010 or 2011 that I started as Mr. Pillsuit. Um, and that's been about a decade now as Mr. Pillsuit. This is where I've gotten my foot in the door as far as digital entertainment goes. Uh, but I've been on this grind for quite a while. So when it comes down to it, you can find me on so many different platforms. And thank Wait, I'm looking at your YouTube right now. Yeah, I just, I just so pulled it up. It, it's it's funny because I have like since I started TikTok and since I started getting the notoriety that I did, I I've actually I started off with about I I gained about three hundred subscribers on YouTube, and I haven't posted anything excluding the thank you video that I made for uh, I think that was for a hundred thousand followers. Yeah. On and TikTok. how far are you now? Because I know you were working on your 200,000 video, but I oh, think you're closer to yeah. 300 now. So that that's interesting because I I've been procrastinating just because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of back end stuff that I've been working on uh, as well as like although I can't talk about it, it's like I've I've got some contracts in the work that I'm doing oh, for ooh. other people now, which is great, uh, but. It's because of that that I wasn't able to get to the 200,000 thank you video right away. And I have all these dancing videos of everybody that I want to be able to get out. But we're so close now to getting 300,000 followers on TikTok. for your 300,000 So videos. I'm like, you know what? If I do it now, uh, it, it seems like I'm just going to be doing uh, the 200,000 and then like immediately going into the 300,000 thank you videos. So I might just hold on to them for the 300,000 thank you video. And I'm just going to have to be like, I'm so sorry that I never got to the 200,000 uh, follower video because I just like it, it was a bit of procrastination, a bit of just put it on the back burner because you got to do this other content um, and this other commission work and everything. So I, I have it. I, I know what I want to do with it. It's just a matter of getting my parts filmed and then editing it. Uh, so to anybody that's listening to this that did submit a, a, a dancey video, don't worry. I'm not Myself just included. I, I'm not just holding it in a uh, in a folder to like look at every now and again it's there <laughs> and it's it, i'm not john travolta with his wig closet like i i'm going to be posting these trust me i'm not i'm not trying to like hold on to these like a creep i want to publish them and i want to show everybody off uh i just uh, i i've had such a hard time getting around to uh getting my parts filmed for it if you would like to send us dancing videos, we're not going to use them for anything. You can do so <laughs> by emailing it to us at lonelyboyhour at gmail dot com. We'll critique your dancing ability in a podcast. Well, oh yeah, we'll we'll do an episode where we just crit it's going to be like a visual only episode. I'm not going to release it anywhere else, and it's going to be us critiquing your dances. <laughs> 
God, I feel so bad for that too. Like it's it's one of those I really wish that I had uh, I had just buckled down, got all the, my content done, and it doesn't help that you're growing insanely fast. I know, and that's the other thing too. It's like I did not expect to get this uh, this far this fast. Um, and so, like, I'm surpassing, and this isn't like me trying to flex. I'm just saying it's crazy to me that where the people are that I followed when I first started, and I had like only like 43 followers that I looked up to and I aspired to, I've now passed them. And but I still, it's still like I still look at them as a, it's like these are my icons. Like these are my oh totally. These are the oh, people that the like thing. inspired me to do it. And doesn't yeah. matter how far along my follower count gets, I still go to their page and it's like, what did they do? Because I really like their content and it, I'm really excited and oh, you exactly. know, I want to be just like them, kind of a thing. Like I'm, I'll throw out some fucking names. Uh, when I I had one other person, but they're the one who blocked me, so I'm keeping it quiet. Okay. Uh, so the people I looked up to when I started uh, TikTok was uh, Last Maverick, okay, mm-hmm. uh, Mad Mad Hatter, um, that great gentleman, and when Fandom Strikes, they were all mm-hmm. kind of like a cluster. Oh yeah, because they all yeah they're 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 associated with each other, and like it feels crazy now that I've like beaten one of them uh, in followers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like they're I like I'm friends with all of them now to an extent. Like I'm not like texting them every day or anything, but like we all know each other and that kind of feels good. Uh, and it's insane to like think of that that I've even like passed one of them or that these fo- my idols know who I am. Um, yeah, exactly. Like it was crazy to me because the people that I first followed are pretty similar to you. I'm gonna go back down into my thing. So. Uh, the first two people that I actually followed, and I feel really bad about uh, not recognizing one of them when I first started to go live, but uh, it was uh, um, uh, Chloe uh, Le Chanton. Oh, and, I know her. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Shannon Carruthers. Um, oh, good choices. Th- those were my first two because uh, at that point when I started to do TikTok, they were, they were on my For You page like all the time. So, and I mean, Shannon definitely uh, deserves it with all of his makeup skills and everything. And then Chloe is just a, a sweetheart. Uh, but Oh, totally. When it came down to like, you know, and then on top of that, I did have like Vex Sammy, uh, uh, When Fandom Strikes, uh, Ghoul Bagel, Josie Green. Like these were... All the good choices. Yeah, exactly. I mean, people that it's like they were making great content then and they're still making great content, if not uh, a little few and far in between sometimes. But it it was nuts when I passed... Uh, it was nuts when I passed Vex, Sammy, um, because I, I remember she kind of did this whole taking me under the wing kind of thing when... I had made my video about all the clicks on TikTok, and they brought me into, uh, at that time, the Alpha Group, or the Alpha Pack. Oh, um, and you get the inner circle. Yeah, and it was an inner circle for uh, a few people that were definitely ahead of me at that time. Like, I, I think I was still under 10,000, and they, they hit me up, and they were like, hey, if you want to join uh, the Alpha Pack, definitely come in and it was a uh, i'm i can't i feel really bad there's like metalhead maiden uh it was a uh, vex sammy and then uh, uh i'm trying to slightly lost a few other people were in there and then uh me and i was definitely the lower lower followed uh creator on there and she had i remember seeing the comment while i was in one of those chats where it said oh yeah he's a smaller creator but he's he, i really like his content and i was like that's such a huge compliment to me and even when it comes down to vex sammy now it's like i love her content i i i understand where she's coming from with a lot of the bs that's going on with tiktok as well as like other drama and calling people out for it. She's definitely become a little bit more of a, a, a warrior as far as like calling people out on their shit, which is great. I just wish that if she's going to do that, she should make another channel for it so that it doesn't oversaturate her, um, the, the OCs that she made, because that's what oh, I yeah. followed her for. And I understand that if you have a platform with that many Follow, um, that much of a following and that much weight behind your clout, 
use it for the right reasons. I do the same thing with a bunch of anti-bullying stuff. Um, oh, yeah. So I get where she's coming from. It's just a matter of it's like people came here for your your OCs and for the content that you were making. Make sure that if you're going to make uh, vocalizations over calling somebody out, you do it sparingly or do it in a large chunk 60-second video and then move back on to your other stuff. People will see those videos, but they don't have to be the uh, the main focus of most of your content. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like when I passed her, like, which was a while ago, uh, like that was nuts to me. Like because it was like, how am I? How is she not getting as many followers as me? And I think it's just because of. Uh, uh, I, I honestly think it's just because of my consistency and my work ethic with that. Like I've made this kind of my my main focus as far as like I got my foot in the door after 15 years of doing this shit. I am not going to let go now. Oh, exactly. Um, I have I have been trying for a lot shorter, and I I mean I don't know if I count this as a footing yet. But this podcast is definitely a good sign that I yes. can, like. This makes me mm-hmm. like feel like I've accomplished something. The fact that I can even have a podcast and get people that I idolize, like uh, like yourself, for example, um, or like the first person to ever say yes to come on the podcast uh, is when Fandom Strikes, and that mm-hmm. was like the first video I ever saw on TikTok was uh, like as soon as it opened up the for you page was like a thoughts that keep me up at night. Yep. So to have so to have that person. Like and uh, they have I don't know if you've noticed a uh, viewer who's looking at the feed they have not come on yet, but not just to have them immediately go yeah sure I'm in, like, it, absolutely and I remember even when I was on the lower the lower tier I was doing this was back before they uh, started to restrict uh, reaction videos or reaction lives, um, but I oh, God, I, I remember oh yeah and I remember uh, joining in on that I wasn't able to uh, drop any cash on it uh, so I didn't gift it but I ended up being one of the people through uh, other followers it's like if you follow this person then you're um, then if you get the seventh slot yeah. down then you're going to get a reaction video and she saw one yeah, of mine I was in those videos yeah and I, I remember it's like you know what I don't know if this is the taboo thing to do or if this is like the uh the norm here on TikTok, but I'm going to give this a shot. And so I did that. I got a video in there. She saw it. She really liked it. She ended up uh, through some other videos of mine that were on the For You page. She then started to follow me. And I've started to play this weird game of like Pokemon when it comes me down too. to uh, when it comes down me to well. uh, friends and followers. Like if there's somebody that I follow that I'm like, I really like their content. I try to do more uh, duets with them until I get their acknowledgement, and then once they start following me, it's kind of like uh, got another Pokemon. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm I am the same way. I <laughs> duet. Weird, I I react. I jump in their lives. I comment everywhere. Yep. I'm like, I just need to get my name in front of them as much as possible because I need notice me, senpai, kind of like mentality for me. Absolutely, I this... and I don't know what that mentality is that like makes us like. I and everybody that follows me, I fall and I follow back. Like, I I absolutely still have that feeling of I like you're 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 a friend first and a collectible second. Like, don't right. yeah, don't well, make for it sure. Yeah, like like for example, you're you're a good example of that because like when when I saw like I didn't see the following notification because this was before notifications were fixed. Yeah. Um. I don't know if you have the categorized notifications. I finally it got it. I it's like so I, nice. I was I've had at it the since very the beginning. Yeah, I was at the very final wave of uh, putting those out, and I understand some people still don't have them. Please don't say that I don't know that you still don't have them. I just oh, yeah. like I I know you get that... attacked when you say you have them. Well, hopefully yeah, by the time this comes out, they fix that and everybody has it. Yeah, yeah. This isn't coming out for like six weeks. That's so. fine. Yeah, <laughs> this is uh, this whole thing was. Uh, uh, it was nuts, man. Like trying to get people's notifications. I would scroll through it. And especially once I started gaining that following, um, so hard when you get those big influxes. 
Oh, absolutely. Anything after 50,000, like, I feel like it should have been a requirement that oh, you got the yeah. notification filter because I could not oh, yeah. see more than, like, two or three comments and mentions through all of the followers that uh, were in the notification system. Right. So, it's worse when you have, like, literally, like, I jumped, when I first started, I jumped from, like, 300 followers to, like, 2K in, in the matter of, like, a day, two days and a half about. Yeah. And I, I could not keep up with everybody because there were so many follows. I couldn't see duets. I couldn't see, it was, it was at a point where I just put out a video. I was like, hey, I'm sorry if I missed your duet. Put a message in here and I'll find it. But, like, uh, <laughs> there was a lot of people. Yeah. I was, was the same way because, oh, you go. Oh, no, I, I was just acknowledging that. My my thing was, honestly, uh, <laughs> since the notification filter finally hit me, uh, I've been very appreciative of not having it as well um, because now I'm seeing a lot more of the uh, duets that were made with me, uh, and I started to go into the backlog. Apparently, there's a lot of Iranian men and Vietnamese women that like to just stare at me. That's weird. I'm not oh, joking. I, like, I don't this was... like duets like that. I hate those. But oh. it's so damn weird to have like these uh, <laughs> these videos of it's just it's just these people staring at my videos as bearded baby, and I'm like, are they trying do to do something? It out? Like I think they're just trying to comprehend. It's like this is their actual reaction of like I just don't understand what the fuck is happening in this video. <laughs> um, I love the ones where people just point. Just point out what you're saying, because yes. I make a lot of quote unquote relatable content. Uh, so people just be like point and shake their head yes, and like that's not content. I mean, it's literally giving me like a direct someone like, hey, look at this guy's videos. Mm -hmm. But so I'll I don't like go, hey, take this down or anything. But I'm like, that is you have not made any content here. This is you. In fact, you did the opposite of make content. You openly and admittedly stole content <laughs> and put it on your page with your face next to it. Yeah, I I kind of at a weird balance between those now where I get the ones where it's like if they're agreeing with you and they're like, yep, that what this guy is saying, that's true. Like or if, you know, that to me is the same as if they were to use the audio themselves, especially with my Is It Just Me or series um, like with hey, I feel like I need to know what the series is because I've somehow missed it and I have something similar. Same. Oh, it, it was something where like I saw the like for me, I I love to grow hashtags as well. Um, oh yeah. So when it comes down to me starting new series, I try to find hashtags that are not used for the most part. And when it came down like to DM tips. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, Beard of Baby was uh, there was no there was maybe four Beard of Baby videos with uh, just like a hundred views between all of them, uh, as far as the hashtag goes. Now I've grown that to almost twenty seven million uh, views, which is great. Yeah. Um. So I I I love to see that number just go up. And uh, so when I first started out, I was looking for something similar, uh, like to what uh. Kells was doing with her thoughts that keep me up at night thing, but without like straight copying somebody's content, something that was unique to me, but also was relatable and shareable. Um, and then I was thinking, oh, what if I did, uh, what if I did a series about, um, about like weird laws of, uh, weird laws around the country where it's like, you know, oh, you're not allowed to lick a frog so on a Tuesday. So here's your useless fact of the day. Exactly. Like, and then somebody told me it's like somebody's already doing that, Matt Hatter, and that's how I learned about her. Um, and it was only until, like, maybe the last month that we started following each other, we were just in each other's orbit. Um, yeah. But it it's finally came down to, like, I always, I personally always had those like, is it just me or, or like, is it just me kind of situation. So I looked up the hashtag, is it just me? And everyone was using the hashtag, is it just me? I decided to add the or at the end of it. And I looked at the hashtag and it was, no one had used that because obviously they're going to go after the one that actually has views in it. So right, I think that was shorter. like, a, absolutely. So they use the, uh, is it just me? And that was like at 300,000, um, uh, 300,000 views. And I decided I was just going to add the or to the bottom of it just as a, um, 
just as a way to differentiate myself from it. And from that now, I, although I haven't done too much with it since then, I do have about 39, uh, I believe about 30 to 39 videos of hashtag is it just me or, and that's at 1.9 million. That was the first uh, hashtag that I decided to really try to grow, but I've kind of started to move past it and I now have to go back to it um, because I, I really like the series. It was just a matter of it started to get stale because I was trying to figure out a, is it just me or relatable topic every single day. And then I, I tried to make it so to, hard. Yeah. And then I tried to make it every like Tuesday and Thursday and then it was weekly and then it was monthly and, and now it just doesn't. And now it's just like whenever I feel like it. Um, well, that's that's how it started with DM tips. And I don't think I made a DM tip and I can't even count the amount of time. Mm-hmm. But at first I just had all these bad ideas for what to do to your players. And I was like, this will make a good little comedy sh- little comedy thing where I just like make jokes and only D&D players will get it. And that's fine. Uh, and I'm now I just lie. don't have I totally any- used them. I totally used some of those it's- on my players. You shouldn't, but I'm happy that you they did. They were so worth it. Sense. Um, and then I just like slowly ran out of ideas and that's the same thing with like ranting. I can only find so many things I'm upset about at a given moment. So it gets slower and slower. And that's what I I mean by ranting. Like I said, I think similar is, uh, I have like my mini rants because surprisingly the hashtag mini rant was not very well used, uh, on TikTok. You'd think it might be. Uh, so I used that, but I open, I used to open it with, um, am I the only one who has this problem? And the joke was that there are very common problems. Yeah, my the whole is it just me or series was very much like it my my thing was that they were things that I kind of knew and some of them were, they weren't and people called me out on it, but things that I felt like these are universal things that we all do but we just as a society don't talk about because they're taboo to actually say out loud. Um which was uh, oh, exactly. why I like, that's actually how, like, my first video that got pseudo-viral uh, actually happened. Like, my my video about, so I did one where it was like, is it just me or does your significant other uh, mix two different words that don't relate to each other uh, to make a weird insult for you? And uh, it, it was a true story where we were in the middle of a fake argument. One of those things that you do sometimes in a relationship where it's like, you just you just complain to complain. You're just pretending to rant so you don't have to have an actual argument. We call um, it bickering. Yeah, yeah just yeah. that playful bickering. And so she just straight up went, shut up, you fuck butter. And <laughs> it, it straight took me back. Like, I was like, what the fuck is fuck butter? That's exactly what I just did in one of my most recent videos. <laughs> yeah, and she, like, I mean, she really, like, kind of, made me stop in my tracks because of it. And so I immediately after she said it, I made the video uh, <laughs> and then I posted it. And it was like through that night, I got like 10,000 likes. And that was my first like, oh, crap, this is growing super fast compared to everything else. Um, so, and that's where my initial like few thousand followers came from was that video. Can I just say I that every that. time you say grow, I imagine like growing a hashtag is like growing a plant. Like you're just gr- like, it's like a plant. <laughs> you I just imagine that every though. time. You give it videos every now and again yeah, exactly. for nutrients. But and... but that's a, absolutely what it is. It's like with any kind of content that you make online, it's a matter of it's like it's how much you feed it uh, that will uh, that will build up and grow that right. uh, hashtag, that piece of media. Like you have to feed that digital media uh beast kind of like think of it as audrey ill uh you know you every single time it's like feed me seymour you gotta oh, give it what yep. it wants <laughs> nah, i got it uh, i was like what like are you talking about audrey too yeah audrey too sorry i i always call yeah, them audrey like, ill the because is... yeah anyways like th- ever since i saw that movie as a kid i always called him audrey ill so i i continue to <laughs> no, call him audrey ill no matter what with uh audrey too i yeah, he'll always be Audrey Hill to me. Feed me, Seymour. <laughs> Feed me, Seymour. Yeah, so that, that is boy, honestly that actor the... actor had some pipes, though. It's such the summation, though, of what digital media is. It's a matter of it's like you have to constantly be feeding it, and some days that's why you get burnout. Like, Oh, yeah. Because you're oh, just yeah. it's so exhausted from having to tend to uh, 
that following and it's just always craving more. You're never going to get out of it if uh, it's something that you're passionate about. You will understand why you have to keep feeding it. But there are a lot of creators on here that they started this as a hobby and now they're kind of starting Hi. to look at it as a career. Um, and it's it's Hi. nuts to me. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> A lot, that's but us. but that's where a lot of Vine Vine uh, stars also started out, where they were just doing these silly videos for silly videos' sake, and then you got and you know not to knock their, uh, not not to recommend them as actual creators now, but like that's where you got the uh, Paul brothers from, where oh, they no. they were very much like doing the and again like I'm not giving praise for the the uh, kind of content they've they've created since then, but. When they started out doing these videos, like they weren't, th I'm sure that they weren't thinking, oh, this is going to be like uh, the big thing for us in our lives. Like they, they, yeah, well, they were, I don't remember what they did, but they worked for Disney when they started. Did they work for Disney? Know. I could be wrong. Let me look up. Let me look it up. I know, I, I mean, know Jacksepticeye uh, works for Disney. Well, yeah, but I mean, he didn't start out as that. I mean, it's really right, funny to see his original YouTube well, videos. Like, oh, oh yeah. weird flex. This is how long I've been. Um, this is how long I've been uh, watching Jacksepticeye. I remember when he did his like one thousand subscriber video. Yeah, I was there like, very beginning too. It was yeah. <laughs> it was funny because I passed on Markiplier when he first started because I was like, this guy ain't gonna go anywhere. Um, <laughs> which I you. mean, that just showed where my ju like my my opinion went back then, where I saw his small videos before he uh, really got anywhere, even past like a few thousand uh, followers. Um, oh yeah, and it was. I mean, I was living in uh, Colorado at the time, and out of nowhere, like I was like, I saw his videos doing some of the, like the amnesia stuff, uh, kind of emulating PewDiePie, and I was like. Eh, this guy, he's all right. He's got a weird voice. Like, he's gonna, he's probably gonna get a small following, but I don't think I'm gonna see much of him. And then it was like less than a year later that I moved back to California, and he had blown up like crazy, crazy big. Oh yeah. Where he oh, was yeah. already about to hit his million followers, and I was like, okay, um, maybe I should have tried to get in touch with this guy earlier. Like, uh, because obviously like at that point it was very much like find creators that, uh, that you can attach yourself with to try to collaborate. And if I had known about that, then I would have loved to have tried to hit him up while he was still only at a few thousand, but, Oh, why do you think we got you on the podcast now, bud? <laughs> <laughs> The same it, reason it, we got Connor on. You're our key to success. Yeah, Connor. Connor is our is. Listen, Connor. I want to give. I don't want to real quick. I haven't really been using it, but I want to consider Connor a co-writer of this episode because <laughs> he gave me a cheat sheet of things to talk about with you. He did. In case we like ran. Out. I'm gonna be honest. We. I'm looking at this list. We have gone through almost all of it organically, which makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what what's I left? I, I want to I want to try to knock these uh, out. Let's let's, let's do let's not. We have, I have a few more things. So, okay. uh, what advice do you have for uh, TikTok creators? Which I think we've kind of talked about. Yeah, and I talk about this stuff uh, anytime that anybody asks. Like at, at anybody that actually listens to this at some point and uh, wants advice, you're always thanks for the lack of faith. <laughs> I, I don't think I I swing that much clout, dude. Like I I mean as much as as much as like putting my name on certain things helps, I, I'm. It's not a lack of faith in you. It's more of a lack of faith in me. I'm hoping that you can hype teasing. me up. Um, oh yeah, where you're to we. It looks like we can't figure out who's the other person's ticket to success. Either you're helping us grow, or we're helping you grow, right. and we'll figure it out later. I we'll mean, you never know. End. Like, I mean, you look at like SNL and how many people like came and went from there, and which ones got popular, which ones didn't. There were there were a lot of weird uh, shift changes in uh, entertainment power in there. Like, that's who true. knows? Yeah. You could be the ne next uh, David Letterman. I'm ready. Oh yes, that's the dream. Absolutely. Like I mean, that's that's uh, I personally look at all this. You look at where like certain creators, and I, I'll digress back to the original topic. But you look at certain creators uh, that started out in mainstream media, and it's like seeing Steve Carell and Stephen Colbert uh, start off like doing these weird SNL sketches that nobody knew their name, such as the ambiguously gay duo. 
Those oh, were yeah. their voices that, uh, you know, a lot of people don't remember that about them. So, and like, same thing with Paul Rudd. Like, Paul Rudd was in a really shitty Nintendo commercial way back in the day. Oh, he's Ant Man. Uh, so, it's weird to see where where people are. Uh, and one last one. Uh, uh, what's his name? Not Johnny Cash. What, who am I thinking of? Uh, John Mulaney? No, not John Mulaney. I'm trying to... Uh, he was also on SNL. Why can I never remember this fucker's name? Uh, National Treasure, uh, Face Off... Uh, um, are you talking about Nicolas Cage? Thank you. I always want to say... There's no way. I honestly always want to say Johnny Cage. And I'm like, he's not a fucking Mortal Kombat character. Like, okay, but I would love if, if Nicolas Cage was a... Mortal Kombat right character. I mean that was like he's got the screams can we get it. Ghost Rider as a DLC for MK11 voiced God, by yeah, Nick Cage yeah, by Nick Cage though it's gotta be by Nick Cage uh, but yeah Nicolas Cage um, in that old Pringles commercial uh, like he had he one a Pringles commercial oh absolutely where he's like him and a bunch of guys are uh, dancing around a convenience store like banging on things like they're in the group stomp a <laughs> really relatable reference right now uh, <laughs> so like, I mean, the, but they're like banging on Pringles cans and like they're doing the conga around the convenience store. And oh, I, I mean, Nicholas Cage's bug eyes are just like going crazy the entire time he like, but it shows like you have to do those commercials and you have to do those uh, roles when you're first starting up and everyone starts off like that. Um, Sorry, let's get back to uh, what you actually asked me. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's fine. I, I'm loving this. You are good. filling that, that time like there's no other. <laughs> I love it. What, so what was the original? Uh, because I completely got off fucking topic. <laughs> the question was what advice do you have for TikTok creators? Yeah, so uh, Nicolas Cage. Um, no, uh, it, it's a matter of consistency, knowing your hashtags and... Uh, and finding shareable, relatable content. Uh, when it comes to timing, know when your audience is actually going to be up and looking at their phones. Don't just post in the middle of the night thinking that they're going to see it. Uh, no offense, like I that's understand how that. That's I built my channel, like, dude. <laughs> but but that's you had a very insomnia uh, crowd of people. Oh yeah. That that followed you on that. I do think that now that you're not on that schedule, though. Uh, I I would absolutely say starting like early, posting one video in the morning. Uh, That's what I do. And one video in the evening, uh, both at times where the East Coast you would start off with, especially because we're in America. Uh, we want to hit that American audience. Uh, for wherever you're at, wherever the East Coast's uh, 8 to 10 o'clock range is uh, in your time zone, Post a video then, and then around the yeah, and then at the uh, um, the four to six o'clock time range, East Coast time, post a video because what are people yes. doing at those times? They're yeah, exactly. When I wake up, I check TikTok. Absolutely, when I get off work, I check TikTok. They they do those things religiously when they get when they wake up, and then when they get off work or school, like they get home, they look at their phones, they they immediately try to uh, pacify themselves with. Uh, media and through that you're starting to like gain an audience organically because your content is on the for you page around those times because if you post in the middle of the night yes you can get that for you uh section if people keep scrolling through stuff but uh the for you page is very uh malicious as far as it wanting that up-to-date content so if you're posting it in the middle of the night and somebody wakes up at eight nine o'clock in the morning there's already about seven hours in there that people have not or people have also been posting stuff and right. have oversaturated the for you page so oh yeah you I gotta look at that time where it's like they're gonna look at it right then and it's fresh I find yeah, that responding like, to comments on your previous videos or like liking comments on previous videos and liking duets right before you post helps a lot too because it gets their attention. Mm -hmm. People get a notification when you comment on their videos or when you comment and you like respond to their comments and then they go to your page and they're like, oh wait, you just posted something. Yep. And that's, that's another thing. Besides that, uh, uh, making sure that you have engagement with your 
audience. Absolutely. It's one thing to have an audience. It's another thing to make sure that your audience knows you're listening. Right. Um, you're oh, active yeah. and you're around and you're not just this figment of this social media platform. Yeah, and I hate that feeling. And I and although when it comes down to following other people versus like engaging with other people, there is a difference between those two things. Right. Um, I do try to, no matter whose comment it is, as long as they're trying to watch my content um, and they're engaging in that content, I, I try to like them back. I, I try to like exactly. their comments back. Uh, and it's it's not only a matter of watching that con or reading their comments and just enjoying it. Putting that light next to it lets me know also I've read that. Like right. I've read I do that, that comment. for every single comment if I can. Yeah. Oh, exactly. So I I definitely feel that's that's a way to do it as well as your hashtags need to have a long tail to them. And uh, for anybody that doesn't know what that means, that means don't go for the overly saturated hashtag for you hashtags. I always go, use the for you hashtag. I'm not gonna and lie. And you can, yeah. but don't don't <laughs> exclusively use that all the time because you gotta. Right. Oh. Their algorithm is very uh, keen on using or if you spam certain hashtags over and over again they see that as spam and it's less likely to get onto that page try to make huh. your uh uh and this is just what i've experienced with uh all of my videos where it's like if i put uh bearded baby videos back and back uh, i personally find that there be one video that does really well and then two that falter um, just because I, I feel like because I use the bearded baby hashtag in every bearded baby video, it, it's only selecting one out of those like four. Um, and so you'll see like a big spike in one of my videos, but then the other two are just kind of falling flat and it's different for everyone. And it's different for time frames. I feel like if you do it like, uh, Kels does where her thoughts that keep her up at night are usually 24 hours in between. Um, it, it definitely can help depending on the duration of time that you do these videos. Exactly. But uh, I, I would say try to find um, hashtags that are between 5 million and 1 billion views. And then try to find a unique hashtag for whatever you're doing that's exclusive to you. And then you can use some of the bigger oversaturated ones. But having that mixture of all of those lets lets you have a bigger exposure as far as like where your for you page uh content is going to come from yeah because the for you page a lot of people think is just they they think that it's just uh uh randomized or like you know it's nitpicked and it kind of is but it's you got to remember the name is kind of staring you at the face it's oh, exactly. the for you page it's whatever content you watch that it's going to show you more of that content if you engage and you watch the entirety of it. Uh, anybody that wants an experiment on this that I did, go through your For You page and any like just scroll through everything unless you see a pet, like any kind of an animal. And then just keep scrolling and then go to those videos, watch those videos three times, like that video. And the pet will show up. And then just yeah. keep scrolling again until you get to another pet video. Watch it three times, click that like button, scroll, 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 like another pet video, keep going, and then give it about a day, and then mm -hmm. go back to your For You page, you will have almost all uh, all pet videos. Or if you have a friend oh, who exactly. watches different stuff, because I watch a lot of cosplay stuff, and my partner watches yeah. a lot of like those really big TikTok like fail fail things that happen our uh -huh. for you pages are totally different at this point yep. like she doesn't even know who i follow at this point because i don't show up there absolutely oh, yeah. so again that for you page it's like it's specifically tailoring the algorithm to you and what you watch and whatever hashtags are in that so if you if you give yourself a wider berth of hashtags and you make sure that you're giving yourself an exclusive one that way whenever they see you on the following page they're going to then see you more on the for you page. Yeah, and like I like a weird thing I think this is interesting uh is like for example, um everyone I talk to follows when Phantom Strikes mm -hmm. follows Kells. 
Um, yet, and then some creator like Enoch True who has like five million followers. I don't know a single person who follows them. Yeah, and it's just because like I make similar enough content to Kells or 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 uh, Mad Hatter or Patrick uh, or all these people that I've kind of been put in the same group of people who enjoy that stuff. Right. Been I've been categorized in a way in a, in in TikTok's weird algorithmic way. I've been categorized. Yeah, it. Again, like, I'm surprised that I got as big on TikTok as I did. I honestly kind of, when I first started out, I started doing, uh, and I'm not talking about the ones that I did three years ago when it was Musical.ly. Um, we, no one does. Yeah. <laughs> no one so, talks about those anymore. Well, like, I did those just to kind of mess around with it, and I put a bunch of, or I put a few videos that I had done on Vine before Vine had died. Um, and then I just, I left it alone because I was like, this isn't really for me. Uh, but talking about, um, talking about a little bit more of the, like my failed attempts at, you know, in getting a following on other media platforms, the, the difference between those and this one is, is crazy because ever since I, I started doing more digital media stuff. There's, I've kind of gone with the flock of everybody else as far as when somebody starts ridiculing an app um, or a a video site or something like that. I jumped on that bandwagon of like, oh, this is stupid. Uh, but after missing out on YouTube, missing out on Twitch, missing out on Vine. Oh, you got to jump at this chance. Oh, but absolutely. like when TikTok came around and it started to have that wave of people doing the cringe videos uh, or like, you know, reacting to the quote unquote quint or cringe videos. I was like, you know what? The last three times that I did this and just went with the flock of doing haha this is stupid i'm not going to be a part of this because i my personal ego is more valuable than the career that i would like to have in the entertainment industry i decided to bite my tongue really hard on that and lean into whatever it was mm -hmm. that tiktok was at that time yeah so, i missed vine so that's why i came to tiktok so we so kind I, of the same experience there so, absolutely i came to tiktok for a completely different reason uh, I was, and honestly, I'm more ashamed of this than I, w I am to be a TikToker. I was an Instagram comedian. I was, <laughs> I was doing I mean, like hey. skits and stuff at my job, um, and I, I was doing okay. I had like 600 followers, and then my Instagram and my Facebook, I think, because they were connected, uh, both got taken down for seemingly no reason. And I was fighting it for like a month and a half and with no success. They barely even emailed me. They didn't tell me what was going on or why it was taken down. And then like one faithful day, like a TikTok ad popped up and I went, sure, why not? And that's how I got started. And like within two weeks, I had about 2K, not to brag. <laughs> yeah, it, it just seems like, it, like, again, anytime that the media starts to kind of goof and ridicule something, that's when you need to strike at it. And that's something that, like, there's a lot of people that talk about it, but the one that has caught my ear as of the last uh, year and a half was uh, Gary Vanderchuk. Um, oh, yeah. Listening to about. him and all of the stuff that he, again, I take his same kind of ideology of, like, Give advice out for free. Like, don't put it behind, right. like, a paywall of, like, oh, if you want to learn how to become successful on TikTok, here's, you know, a 10-step book that you have to pay $60 to get. It's like, screw that. No, I'll give it to you for free, and I'll give everyone a consultation absolutely free. Um, so right. If you help people, they'll help you. So if you help someone and they get they get popular on a social media app, they're more likely to help you get popular once they've they've got their foothold. There's no reason to keep information away so that oh, people can't grow yeah. and, and share the growth, you know? Absolutely. And that's, that's where my mindset comes from is a matter of like, let's say I make somebody uh, or like through that advice that I give them and they put it actually into principle. And that's the thing that I do have to preface with everybody is you have to put it into practice and right. make it a principle of your life. Yeah. So when it when people like ask me, oh, what should I do? I have a lot of people that have asked me and then I give them the advice and then they don't take it. And it's because of that that I'm like, you're you're fucking yourself over if you just 
don't listen. And I'm, I'm not trying to be a dick about that. I'm trying to say, if I'm giving you this information as far as where I've gotten my success on TikTok and trying to lead it into other branches of social media, if you're not listening to that and you're seeing my growth and being like, well, you're just more popular than me. You're just this, you're just that. And you're giving those excuses of like, I could never do what you're doing. It's like, no, you can, but you're deciding not to. And you're deciding oh, exactly. that you don't want to have that, uh, that regiment of time to do these things. You're giving yourself these excuses every single time. So when I, when I say something, I hope that people take it into that actual like practice of whatever they're doing. And if they don't and they complain and they continue to say, it's like, oh, well, I'm just not getting enough views. I can't do the same thing that you're doing. It's like, I am a 33 year old fat bearded man. I oh, should yeah. not have this <laughs> success on a app that's uh, for a demographic of children under the age of 18. So if I'm able to do this on this app, there's no reason anybody has any complaint on any other social media platform. Right. Exactly. And, like, don't get me wrong. I don't think – I don't know exactly what yet, but I don't think I'm going to, like, listen to every bit of advice you said. But I'm also not going to be like, oh, yeah, I can't just do what you do. I just – I'm actively choosing not to because I'm lazy uh, and I need to take credit for that on my own. Like, uh, that I'm the reason that's holding me back. I just don't like it when somebody tries to put resentment towards somebody else's success because they're like, oh, well, you just have an in somewhere else that I don't. It's like, no, I don't have any – like, when it comes down to TikTok, it's not like I have a rep that's telling me what to do. I, right. I wish I did because then if that would make If you need a my... manager, my rates are pretty low. Yeah, like, I mean, it, it's one of those, it's like anybody that wants to take me on as a talent for some kind of agency, fucking call me. But Please. at the same or time. Or you can email us and, <laughs> and we'll call him like, at lonelyboyhour at gmail.com. There you go. And for that reason, I, I look at that kind of stuff as, you know, you're you're giving yourself a handicap if you're not doing those certain things. And again, it is a to each their own. I understand that you don't have to put all of my same practices into your life, but when it comes down to what I've realized about this specific app and why I've been growing as much as I have, it's because of the fact that I took these regiments of every other social media platform that I've ever done and and tried to uh, find the the proverbial insides of the, this creature <laughs> to figure out how it ticks. Um, exactly. And so, yeah, now now we're where we're at. I continue to try to, uh, you know, and I, I've been, again, with my stuff, I've been very docile as far as, like, content that I've made. I, I usually record once a week for about eight to ten hours of a bunch of bearded baby drafts and uh, some other OCs that I've started, like Georgina. Um, and I love Georgina. I, uh, Georgina's great. Beautiful. I love her. Um, I, I, I want to continue to do her as well. Um, but all of these, uh, all of these uh, videos are usually one day, which is usually sometime on the weekend, and then I just leak them out throughout like the next couple of weeks. I need to now get off my ass and do more. Um, so my days have been shot as far as like scheduling goes, um, which is why it's like when when we were scheduling this, I was like, I gotta figure out what day is gonna be best because like between Twitch, between YouTube, and between TikTok, oh yeah, I've been and like. So he didn't swamped. see it, but he sent me a list of all the shit he has to do. He wasn't like, oh, I can only do this day because I can. He was like, oh, I have this on this day, this on this day, this on this day, and yeah, this on man. this day. So Fridays in the morning works best. I'm like, shit, yeah, man, thanks for coming on the podcast at all. Like, absolutely. Right. And then now we're we're in the middle of a new situation now where I'm working with a upcoming app as well called Firework that oh. I just got signed on to and we're working Give on. Give us the scoop. Uh, Firework is basically, it's it's the same kind of looping media app, but it's got its own little uh, twist to everything. It doesn't have duets. Um, it has reactions for stuff, but instead of liking, you do reposts. And uh, the most unique thing that I found about it, which I really, really enjoy 
is this aspect of having not only portrait videos, but also landscape videos where all you oh, have to do oh. is, oh, yes. but the thing is you can do both. That's, that's the crazy thing about it is you make a video, uh, but then you have a reveal option that you can do with it, where if it is a landscape video, you have it as land or if it's a landscape video, you have your phone in portrait. There's a little sign icon in the corner that says reveal. And all you have to do is tilt your phone to landscape mode and it will okay. organically push it into landscape mode flu- awesome. fluidly. There's that. not even, it, it, there's not even a matter of like, Oh, you turn it. And then there's that pause where it has to rotate itself. It knows where your phone is in uh, orientation and it will uh, show you the video uh, in real time. That's oh, that's amazing. awesome. So it's it's a... really, really cool. I can't wait to start making more content with that kind of feature in it. But uh, yeah, we started, we just uh, started working with them and it's it's really cool. So anybody that wants to find me on there, it's the same thing as TikTok, at Mr. Pillow Suit. Um, and what's it called one more time? It's called Firework and it's uh, okay. got a little, uh, uh, film video icon with it and then i believe it's like an orange tinge um okay yeah it's got a little looping film audio icon on it i want to give that a, a perusal i would definitely recommend it uh i it, it's definitely different than content that's on uh tiktok right now where tiktok is very adamant about like its lip syncs and duets the content that's on there is more featureable and more uh, original content to all of their creators. And it's really interesting you say that because I have this weird opposite problem where my lip syncs don't do shit comparison to my actual me talking. Oh, see, I'm the opposite. My lip syncs do way better than my originals. <laughs> and Well, then I guess I'm just funnier than you, Zoe. Apparently. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. I feel like I'm right in the middle of there where it's like if I, if I do uh, – if I do an is it just me or that'll get some uh, traction a lot of times. And then those lip sync beard to baby videos, I've got to start doing more original audios to beard to baby very soon here. Um, because as much as I've enjoyed doing the lip syncs for beard to baby, there is an actual story to him that I want Ooh. to start getting out. Oh, there's I'm a excited. story. Yeah. So now you got, you got us and the viewers on their toes. Now. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, there is the backstory in his very first video, his premiere video, uh, where, I mean, Bearded Baby isn't actual, like, actually a baby. So he's over 120 years old. Um, oh, shit. Oh. What a backstory he, Right. He, he's actually 120 years old. What he is is he's, a, uh, he's an old vaudeville, like 1920s vaudeville snake oil salesman. Like, you That's know, amazing. He, he, I love that. He was actually like he was working on his next like, you know, quote unquote miracle elixir when he actually found like by accident a uh, a Potion of youth. kind of. Yeah. Like so he, he found an elixir of youth uh, recipe that he didn't realize at the time. He just wanted to see if it tasted all right so that when people uh drank it they didn't feel like they were you know it was gross or anything like that because that's how snake oil salesman does it did they make it uh taste good they make it put so um he uh he tasted his own elixir and then after doing so though he found out that it was an elixir of youth and it reverts his body back into a baby form but, but his the beard's the, still there. Well, but the issue is because he didn't get it completely correct, uh, the elixir only reverts his body down to it, but his head <laughs> only reverts back to when he originally drank the elixir. So oh. he can continue to drink this, and he's always going to have, like, by the time he's, like, in his, like, 20s, 30s, he, he his body looks like, you know, a 20-year-old, his head looks like it's six year old, so kind of a little Benjamin Button looking thing. Oh, so weird. in half Benjamin Button. Exactly. So he has to continue to drink the elixir and go back to baby form. Otherwise, like he will die if he goes over a certain age. Right, because his um, head will his head will still be old. Absolutely. So he's gotta continue to drink this elixir and keep going back to baby form uh every like, you know, twenty to thirty years. Um, just to keep himself alive 
So that's that's, that's exciting. That's a whole ass story. I, was say, I wasn't that's ready amazing. for. It. So yeah, and I mean, not a whole lot of people know about it because they just see the bearded baby thing, and a lot of people just think it's like, oh, this is a weird concept. It, there's an actual like, I want to build up this kind of storyline for him that I just haven't gotten any like time to script it out and to record the audios for. But soon enough, like that that storyline's gonna be out there, and I can't wait to. Start working more That's with some other people with audios and wonderful. It, it's going to be fun. I can't wait to see where it's going. There is a video coming out probably by the time this comes out that uh, you're going to see someone else is drinking the elixir. Ooh. So, Ooh. so uh, I'm excited yeah. to I'm excited to show that. Um, but yeah, there there is that video of like someone else is drinking his elixir and he's kind of pissed Sneaky. off at it. And there might be quite a few different baby body uh, characters coming out very soon. Well, I'm Damn. very excited. That's something to look forward so, to. So first of all, I want to just like make something clear. You are a treat, Joe. You are just a yes. tr- absolute. Tr- this is the fastest hour and a half I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you are just a delight to talk to. I'm trying to see if I have anything left on this cheat sheet we didn't bring up. Sure. Uh, Let's see. Um, the last thing you said to talk about, actually, no, you gave me. T- I missed two things, so you can choose to answer them both at the same time if you want somehow. Okay. Which is uh, who uh, who you've worked with in the media industry, and also to ta- ask about the Spoon War. Okay. <laughs> see so, if you can fit those into one sent- into one answer. <laughs> so I'm not gonna bring up the person that I've worked with in the film industry just for the fact that. There, there's contractual obligations to that. Um, I respect that. That's uh, valid. And as much as I, like, again, I, I can't really talk about any of that. So I'm going to move on from that question. But uh, as far as the Spoon Wars goes, Spoon Wars has been uh, great. I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy doing the, uh, the actual, like, idea of, me and Orange Hat Girl having these two personas going after each other. Um, very very uh, uh, spy versus spy, I would say. Oh, I do love it. Speaking of which, you'll know <laughs> Orange Hat Girl is also supposed to come on the podcast. Yes. So. Oh, yeah. She, fuck, I love that girl. Like She is so amazing as far as all of her content goes. Um, I've never really talked to her. I, I I follow her, but I'm not more like she. She's just got one of those very uh, appealing personalities where she just she's a delight just to uh, chat with and to goof around with and uh, like uh, man, I I'm making me hype for when she comes on. She she's she's I'm gonna so be excited. a pistol for sure. She's she's awesome. So hopefully she's not too uh, sleep deprived because of the kids. Um, yeah. oh. but, uh, she, when she's, uh, when she's on her game, she's on her game. Um, yeah. I can't wait to have, uh, or listen to that podcast cause she, oh, she's, oh, you're going to listen great. to the podcast. Oh yeah. You, uh, uh, and we won't judge you cause our last quest guest didn't either quest. <laughs> our last guest didn't either. It's funny cause it was Gwen. Uh, last guest uh, didn't either, but have you listened to the podcast? Uh, no, I haven't, and that's only because I only heard about the name of it uh, maybe two days ago, and I've been super busy with the Twitch streams and everything. Yeah. I knew I was I going ain't judging on this. You. Well, I didn't get the name from you, and I mean, this is on you. You didn't give me the name of the podcast. <laughs> that's oh. true. I just said you got to be on my. You just I said figured hey, you followed I'm me be on it, and you then... followed me, Joe. I thought you might have seen it. No kidding. <laughs> well. Well, I mean, oh, and that's that's the I guess I can follow that up with. That's the reason why there's an issue when I see people that follow a hell of a lot of people on TikTok, um, because you you stretch yourself thin when it comes down to other people's content. I'm less yes. than 200 people that I actually follow. That doesn't mean that I only like 200 people on this app. It's a matter of the ones that I engage with, like yourself. Uh, they, they're they they're the ones that I, I follow just for the fact that if I followed everybody that I really liked, um, my my social media on TikTok would – or like the For You page on TikTok would be so oversaturated yes. that I wouldn't see a lot of other people's content. Um, so he, here's the tea. Uh, I just checked. I did tell you a week ago. I'm kidding. I did tell you a week ago, but I'm teasing you. Don't worry. 
I believe you did, yeah. But it was a matter of uh, I didn't see it until Monday, and then I'm ah, just joshing you. Called the it's okay board. if a... you watch it. You're one of the few people who isn't a bot that watches this. <laughs> I know. I think or we listens. get a few because we get a lot of com. Like I get a lot of people like talking about the podcast in my live streams now. That's uh, it's, true. It's, it's and I love no no I love this podcast honestly a little more than I like making TikTok uh, videos. This is my favorite part of the week. Oh yeah, even though we do this more frequently than once a week, I even mean, though our podcast is every other week. You know, we got to build up that draft library. Oh yeah, you know what? which is going to make every have. video seem a little dated. It's going to be all outdated. Like, we're like, yeah, you're below two hundred. Th- you're below three hundred thousand, and then by the time this comes out, you're gonna be at like a quarter. I got that. You remember that half a million? Like, <laughs> I would say as long as you keep it within like you know uh, five to ten drafts. I mean that that's that's a pretty decent amount of time. You gotta think that's about two and a half months. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me see. I can actually tell you when this video is going to come out because that's Lucas. If you want to help us release our videos sooner so we re- release b- weekly instead of bi-weekly, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash lonelyboyhour. Did um, you just do a shill for me? I did. <laughs> I did a successful shill, too. It's one of the only ones I'll ever do. <laughs> this is coming out July 15th if we don't hit that Patreon goal, yeah. which I don't think we will in, in, the, in that time. So, oh, yeah, it's going to be a little dated by then. And you know what, though? Like, I mean, there's a lot that could happen between uh, here and now. Who knows? Maybe I'll have uh, gained some kind of a coke addiction and run through the streets naked. Of, uh, <laughs> and we'll be like, Hollywood we'll be Islands. like, we'll, we'll have to debate whether or not we could release it. But we'll be like, we'll have to release it as like a tribute to when you were clean. <laughs> and like, we'll have to turn it into I'll make up uh, at the end. I'll have to be like, oh, and thank you. If you want him to be like this, you can help for just pennies a day. Like, do you, you, know, do you he, remember when Mr. Pillow suit was OK? <laughs> I like how it's not even when he was good. It's just when he was OK. When he was OK. <laughs> yep. That's the story of my life. I've never been great. I've only been OK. Same. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a uh, it's been a trip with everybody uh, on the following page, and again, like that Pokemon aspect of playing, um, playing like gotta catch them all with certain creators. But the ones like uh, Orange Hat Girl, where it's like I actually watch their stuff. I've missed so many people because of the fact that it's like once you get above a certain amount of uh, people that you follow. You just miss their content. Oh um, yeah, and it's ridiculous. I'm, I'm, uh, I, and I feel bad for anybody that's like they're a part of somebody who has a uh, like their following list says like they're following their ten thousand people. Oh yeah, that oh, yeah. 10, you're not limit. seeing anyone's. content. You're not then. like I mean you're probably seeing people's content on the following page, but there's no way you're getting through ten thousand people. Well, yeah, the content. following page isn't blank when you do that. Like, yeah, I mean you're gonna see people, but at the same time, like, how many people are you? Like, it, it's it's such a farce to be on somebody's following page if they're following that many people. Like, yeah. they're not following you; they're just adding you to the uh, collection and hoping that you add them back. Um, right. Oh yeah. And I get that there's gonna be someone that's gonna give me flack for saying that, but. It, it is true. There, it's kind of the truth. There, yeah. There's a truth. reason why I go through these uh, these moments of, like, I will follow somebody. And sometimes they are also people that follow me back. But then I will uh, remove them from uh, my list just for the fact that it's, like, either they haven't made content in a while. Either uh, there's not somebody that I personally talk to all the time. And it's a no offense moment to me where I... I don't want to feel like they think that I'm uninterested in their stuff. It's not that. It's a matter of to the people that I actually engage with, like uh, people like Josie Green. Um, I'm trying to think of some other people that say, or you know, Sir Spam a lot, uh, uh, and a lot of these these other creators that I've made contact with over over this five six month. Where are we at? We're at the sixth month of the year. Um, like, because I started June or I started January 1st of this year. That's when I started. The Dude, election. we started on the same day. Yeah. This was, uh, this was one of those, like, I, I needed to do something because 
one of my and he'll yeah, I don't know if he'll see this, but one of the people that or one of my good friends that told me something very off putting during uh, New Year's uh, kind of put me in this headspace of like, fuck it, this is going to be my year where I'm going to put a piece of content out every single day. And I don't care if anybody sees it. I need to do this for myself. Um, yeah. And because of him saying, it's like, oh, you're a funny guy, but you know, or I, no, he didn't say I was a funny guy. He said he could help me be a funny person. And oh. it was that little, like, it was that small, what? small, like, twig in the back of my head that just snapped. And I was like, did you just say that I did? Like, I've been doing this shit for 15 fucking years. To say that I don't know comedy is, uh, is such an insult. Uh, oh, yeah. So when he said that, I was like, all right, fuck you, dude. Like. I'm going to I'm going to do this and I'm going to put all of this effort into what I do because I, again I'm not I'm not going to say their name and I'm not going to say uh what kind of content they've created but it, it's a difference between creating content and publishing content and then procrastinating and just telling people that you're making content for the satisfaction of people saying, "Oh, that's really cool that you're working on that thing." but never right. actually developing and publishing that content. Um, Fair. because I've had a lot of people over my life where they're like, Oh yeah, I've got the next big movie script. It's going to be as big as avatar. It's going to be as big as Titanic and all these other James Cameron movies that do really fucking well for some reason. Uh, like they, they, they say that they've got that next new big thing that's going to stand the test of time. And then they never make it. They never make yeah. the actual content that they talked about because they just want the satisfaction of selling or selling the idea to somebody right. uh, to get the compliment. So it, it's kind of like getting a uh, it's kind of like getting a advanced paycheck on some work that you have yet to do. And do. Um, yeah, that self gratification. That's like all of Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. that that self. Well, I mean, with Kickstarter, there's a lot of those people as well. But it's like at least there's a product that is attempting to be made. Sometimes it falls flat. Sometimes it's straight up a scam. But uh, when somebody says it's like, oh yeah, I'm making I'm making a movie, and it's got you know aliens and zombies and you know this that and the other and you know here's the whole plot line of what it's gonna be like, and then somebody goes. That sounds amazing. For some reason, they put that in that compliment bank and they say, okay, cool. I got the compliment. I got the quote unquote review of my v movie that has yet to be made. That'll put it or that'll give me the procrastination to push it back for the next two or three years. And and then say, uh, listen, I I I, I low key can be guilty of that. I'm not going to pretend that I'm like better than that. Um, but I had this like fortunate weird thing happen where my, uh, my fans are just so, ag just aggressive enough to where I actually have to do these things. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, this podcast started as a joke on my live stream <laughs> it did. and look at us now. Absolutely. And I, I do the same thing. Like anytime that I come up with an idea on my live stream, there's a lot of times that I say, it's like, I'm definitely going to make that there's right now, uh, I know that I have to do a list of mundane songs that uh, talk <laughs> about everyday life. There's about 15 songs that I got to make uh, for do my it. Patreon. Um, but then on top of that, we had a live stream where I I had uh, told people my feelings, and I will get well over two hours if I talk about it to its extent, but my hatred for the new Sonic movie trailer um, yes. Oh, oh, bad. Bad so, times. Yeah. So I made a joke about how much of a horror movie it actually looked like. And through just uh, this conversation, I, I attributed it to the movie The Ring. Um, and I told everybody, it's like, I'm going to make a trailer making uh, Son the Sonic movie into a horror movie. And I did Do that. It. And I, I, I put it on my page. It's on there right now where it's uh, it's the Sonic movie uh, mashed up with The Ring. Um, I love it. Just for the fact that it was like, this is how much shit this movie looked like. Um, where you feel like after watching it, you're going to get a phone call and it's just going to go, gotta go fast. And you're going to freak <laughs> out. 
I love it. So, uh, like, again, it, it's a matter of, like, if you're somebody that wants to get into this game, it's like, stop bullshitting yourself. It's a matter of follow through. Exactly. You have to put things out there. And if, if you're insecure about what you're doing, you need to push that to the back of your head and you need to just push stuff out. Because right. the second you start second guessing yourself and second guessing your content, you're putting yourself in a bad wheelhouse of uh, of cycling through all of your regrets. And and one of them will be a matter of, oh, I should have jumped on this when I had the chance. Oh, yeah. Um, so, listen, I want to – because one more – you are a delight, but we are, like – we are at a, a, an hour and 40. So I think I think it's time we should start closing up. I love talking to you. Don't get me this wrong. We're you are the best. The lonely Absolutely. Boy Hours. Yeah, we're turning into the Lonely Boy Hours. <laughs> so uh, thank you, everyone, for coming to this uh, extra long episode of the Lonely Boy Hour with Joe, a.k.a. Mr. Pillow Suit. Uh, if you like this and you want to help me get out of the closet, you can do so <laughs> by going to patreon.com slash lonelyboyhour. Just donate just donate a dollar. Like it's not soundproofing isn't that difficult. Or if you want this episode out with sooner than when I said, you can get it to weekly episodes by also pledging. If you wanna email us segment ideas or just want us to critique your dance moves, uh, you <laughs> can do so. It. By emailing us at lonelyboyhour at gmail.com. We've not got any emails from fans, but I can I had at least attest that I've re- read every single email we've gotten from everything else. Yes. Um, uh, let's see. we got to do the uh, song segment. So oh, do, you have nice. a, uh, do you have a song to recommend for us, Zoe? I did not warn Mr. Pillow Suit that we do a song recommendation, so you don't have to <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't have one off the top of your head. I do have one. I'm, I'm sure that uh, uh, people have heard this one, but it's called Temporary Love by Ben Platt. Um, I have. Yes, I'm pretty sure most people have, but I just want to throw that out there because I was really feeling it this morning when I was brushing my teeth. So, so uh, for me, I'm going to go with um, the song Sailing Home by Destry Smith. I think it is delightful and cute and sweet, and it sounds nice. Joe, do you have a song named off the top of your head you can you can recommend to people? You don't if you don't have one, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to go with uh. I believe it's Taking Over the World by I Don't Know How They Found Us. Okay. That, that's a great band name. I about to say. Uh, yeah. Anyway, thank uh, – oh, let's – oh, we got to shill our own stuff. Yes. Uh, so I am uh, I'm the Noodle Doodler on TikTok. That's N-O-O-D-L-E. Oh, sorry, there's a T. <laughs> Listen. Li- you never I'm get the it no- right. I put I put our social medias in the description, so please just go there. I fr- I don't know why I still do this. Uh, Zoe, go. Uh, Trash Z uh, T R A Z H I E. That's on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and then Twitter is Original Tragedy. And Joe, if you want to give us your stuff, well, maybe we'll propel you to victory. Absolutely. If you guys want to follow any of my social media, you can find me at my Linktree link at l i k n or l i n k t r period e e backslash Mr. Pillow Suit M R P I L L O W S U I T. Beautiful. Awesome. Uh, anyway, thanks for guys. Thanks for coming, guys, and make sure to get yourself tested. And hydrate or hydrate. <laughs> you guys have a good one. All right, guys, before we end, I would like to give a special thanks to our Patreon subscribers, David Harshay and Sean Mills, for their donations. Have a nice day. Hey.